Boker Tov, today's daf is Mem Dalit 44. We pick up um, on daf Mem Dalit Mem Dalit, about 10 lines down at the two dots, and, we're conti- and now we're continuing to look at the Mishnah, which was identifying um, those parts of um, those parts of uh, the, those, the different types of animals and the different types, excuse me, again, the different types of the Korbanot and the different parts of the Korbanot uh, that Pete does or does not apply to. So it says like this, anything that has something else that serves as a matir, meaning the meat or the entrails, is the simple example in an animal sacrifice, that it, that the blood is what is done to make the korban valid. And once the blood is put on the on the mizbeach, then the meat and the entrails are permissible, either to be eaten by humans or to be put on, or the, with themselves to be burnt on the mizbeach. So therefore the blood is the matir, and people doesn't apply to the blood, meaning now we're talking here, by the way, we're applying not at what stage of the process, but when an animal is people, the blood itself is not people. You know, even when the korban is people, if, if one were to eat the blood, it would not, it would not get kares. Um, but the parts of the korban which have a bat here, the meat and the entrails, there people does apply, okay? So that's the meaning of the phrase, koshyei any type of part of that korban that's something else, <clears throat> Serves as its matir, and the other, and that thing that serves as, and that once that other thing that serves as its matir, the thing that validates it, makes it permissible whether to people or to the altar. That type of thing chayav alav mishum people. So the says like this: Tanur Rabbanan. Mm. Well, I gotta watch my voice. Oh, um, enu maybe el kiyotze b'shlamin. So here's a brighter that focuses on how we derive this from the verses about people, because the verses about people are talking about a shlamin. So the writer says maybe the maybe the so are only talking about shlomim. Maybe people only applies by shlomim. Um, um, and even if you're going to broaden it a little bit, maybe the you would only broaden it like in the most narrow way possible. To only include something that is very similar to a shlomim. That's the same way shlomim are eaten for two days and the intervening night. Um, Afkol. So maybe also people would only apply to korbanot that are eaten for two days in the intervening night, which is a very small category of korbanot, as we'll see in a minute. Um, how about your standard korban that's eaten for a day and a night? How do you know that people goes beyond the scope of their of shlumming like korbanot? Okay, that it says in the pasuk about people. Is maybe for Zion here, I think. Yes, seven eighteen. Thank you. Um, it says, "The im he achol ye achav mi b'sar zeva chashlamin by Yom Shishi lo ye ratze." So it's me besides So so from the meat, so that the idea of meat is a broadening word, it's being read. Any sort of korban, you know, the meat eating of the meat of any korban. Okay, so um uh where were we? Uh Kosh So anything that basically has like meat that can be eaten is included in this prohibition. Ola she'en she'eran ne'achalim mina. And how about the ola, which is the korban that does not have anything that can be eaten? So that's not in the category of mibesar. Talmud lomar zevach. Mibesar is zevach shlamav. Now, why does it just say mibesar shlamav? So zevach is any sacrifice. Of course, the irony is that zevach classically in the psukim refers to a shlamin, refers to something that is eaten, you know, whatever. But okay. Anyway, so the besar and the zevach allows us to include all sacrifices. Now that's all maybe animal sacrifices. How do you know to include even much broader? Even include birds, even include mincha, even include the oil of the mitzora. We'll discuss the oil of the mitzora in a little bit. Okay, now this is not this pasuk here. This is a different pasuk, and and you know by um, the Torah is going to sort of link it. Okay, this is a pasuk here by Luda Chabez, which is talks about Tuma. Okay, it says, um, uh, So anything that they sanctify, sanctify to me. The problem is that that's that talking about Tuma. How do I know that possible about Tuma to apply it to people? For us, he knows so it's a two, it's a two way jump. Okay, by no sir it says by two it says velo yichalalu, and by no sir it says velo chalel. I think velo yichalalu. Um, so therefore, this scope of by by tuma 
of all korbanot by this chilu chilu link applies to nosar, and once we apply it to nosar, basi pigul avon avon minosar. So there's a link by pigul and nosar, both to the words avon, you know, nicha, so tisas avonah, etc. That that allows us now to say that since kachim is all korbanot, nosar is all korbanot, and pigul is all korbanot. Okay, now meachrish is so full. Rabbo is called davar lamanem are shlami. Okay, so if you're going to include everything, why does the Torah emphasize shlami? So meat lamanem are shlami meata. Omar luchat to tell you, ma shlami ma shlami miuchadim sheyesh lem matimim ben ladamenim mitzvah to tell you that there is one limit. So the one limit is that it has to function like shlami that there is something that is done that is a matir. And what's left over now becomes permissible to a person or to the altar. That So therefore, that is the limit. And as we saw in the Mishnah, things that basically don't have two parts to them, like a mincha of Kohen that you all burn all up, right? Or, um, and other types of examples that we had, the comets, the levona, the blood itself, those things that they themselves are the matir, for that is what we learned from Shlamim, that people does not apply. But not to limit it to the scope of the korbanot. Now, we're going to continue down. Now, this actually is going to sound very much like our Mishnah, but this is really a continuation of the Brayta, okay? So it's actually interesting here because you get to see the Mishnah is sort of like the codified, you know, din, and being quoted parallel is like the Midrash Halacha, which sort of derives it all out, and sometimes actually the lines in the Midrash Halacha are either borrowed from or copied from, or copy to the Mishnah. Interesting question, like which came first, right? Sometimes Midrash Halacha seems to be quoting a Mishnah. Maybe sometimes a Mishnah is constructed from a Midrash Halacha. Anyway, so here it continues. So even an Ola, as we said, is included, even though there's no meat to be eaten, but the meat can be put on the altar. So that's considered Yesh Lomatirin, the Ola the Kohanim, and the uh, skin for the Kohanim. Is this really saying that you get if you transgress people if you eat the leather of an ola? I don't know. Anyway, ola sa'of dama matias besar lemit beach, a bird ola similarly, although it's not a you know, not a cow or a sheep or whatever. But okay, the blood now allows the bird to be put on the altar. So people applies to the beef meat of the bird. Khatas of the mamatas besar the kwanim, khatas of the blood may allow the meat to be eaten by the kwanim. And parmani srafim is simani srafim, which we're going to see is a debate, but according to this approach, dama matias in we karate. Okay, yes, because even there, the blood, even though the actual meat is burnt outside, it's not considered to be allowing the meat to be eaten or to be put on the altar, but at least it allows the, you know, entrails to be put on the altar. Okay, so all of that is included based on the, you know, basar, zeva, shlamav, asher heim, we include all these korban. Now, what is excluded from this idea of yesh lomatiri? Umotziani as a komet, desalavona, vaktores, so here it actually has the right order, comets and Lavona. What's excluded are the components that actually are the matir themselves. Okay, the ketores, the, the, the comets, the hand breath, the Lavona, the frankincense, both of which are the matir for the mincha. So this has an interesting question. Is the comets a matir for the Lavona? Like, can you do the Lavona before you do the comets? And, you know, we just sort of see it that way. Uh, but anyway, um, Torres is the incense that's burnt on the inner altar. Whether the free will mincha of any Kohen who chooses to give a mincha, the whole mincha is burnt, or the obligatory mincha of the Kohen Gadol. All these things, they them, either they're the matir of something else, or they're the matir of themselves. But if they're the matir, then they are not uh, pigul. Minchas Minchas Nesachim, right, the uh, flour and oil plus the wine that comes with a korban. Also, you can sort of obligate yourself separately. So according to this approach, since it can come after you brought the korban, not on the same day, so there's nothing to matir it. It might even be separated out after you brought your korban. So therefore, that is matir itself. So when it comes by itself, it's certainly matir itself. And in the Mishnah, there was a debate about what happens when it's coming with the korban. And the blood, the blood is the obvious thing that is the matir. So even though that's during the act of the blood is exactly when you make people, that's the whole point, because it's the matir, but it itself does not become people. No, no, no. So this is the Rebbe of our Mishnah. He says, I'm going to use Shlamin to exclude something else. Yes, I agree with you. It excludes something that's a matir, but it also excludes korbanot that, that are not put on the outer altar, that the blood, the matir, is not put on the outer altar. So a inner chatos, the matir, the blood, I mean, yes, the Emurim are on the outer altar. Did I say inner before I meant the outer? Anyway, it has to be like a shlumming that the matir is put on the outer altar. So by a 
by these inner chata'ot, although the emurim are put on the outer altar, the mati of the blood is put on the inner altar, so for him that's just categorically excluded from people. Mm -hmm. I really do need an amora here to be talking for me. Of course, yes, and I'm the bear, he's on Hayabala, but um, Hayabala has to have that the matters put on the outer altar. The shoe people, Yatsu Prime Minister Rafa, see Miss Rafim, Hosh, ain't on the bear, he's on Shlamim, ain't heaven of me shoe people. Okay, so that's the end of the Praita. And the whole end of that Praita is very, very, almost word for word, our mission, a little bit different, but pretty much identical. But the beginning is showing how you get it from the verse. Amar, now let's go back and analyze this more line by line. Kiyote Bishlamim. So it says, I might have thought, maybe it's only just right no, things that are very similar to a shlamin, that are eaten for two days in the intervening night. Now, how many korbanos are there like that? Can you name any korban that's 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 like a shlamin and not a shlamin that's eaten for two days in the intervening night? Don't feel bad if you can't. It's very hard to find one. Okay, so here's what the Mar says. So my new, there's one one thing that uh, that fits that category. Bechor, the only thing is the bechor which we tend to think of as like a type of a shlamin for exactly that reason, but it's not, technically speaking. So maybe I would have limited people to just that, because that's the thing that's most similar to a shlamin. Now, my Asi, now how would I have extended, if I'm going to broaden shlamin to things like shlamin, what principle am I going to use to broaden it? If it's like a type of biomimatsinu, like, you know, uh, an analogy, just like it applies to shlamin, it should apply to similar things. So that type of an argument, it has to be really pretty identical. So, So Nisachim have other demands. You put your hands on it, you bring the Nisachim, you wave the, you know, the breast and the thigh. So it's not exactly similar. It's not exactly similar. You can't just go ahead and apply it to something else. So it's basically based on the principle of cloud, proud, cloud. Okay, it says, So Zevach Shlamav is only a Shlami, that's a Prat. Yachel is a Klau, anything you eat. Of course, the problem is, Klau Prat, you have only the Prat, you don't have anything similar to the Prat. In order to broaden it, it needs to be a Klau Prat Klau. So where are you going to get your Klau Prat Klau? Maybe you always could have said this was a Rebo Yomiyet, but anyway, so it's going to say the double language of Heachol Yeachel gets to count as the two Klaus. So Heachol is Klau, Shlamav is Prat, Yechel is another klal, and that would have allowed us to broaden it. Yim yechel yechel. So Moses, how do you create klali the sam piyad dadi? Neither one minute. But those two klali are juxtaposed. It's not that the product appears in between them. Amarava, kedami marba marava, like they say in Israel. Kol makom shata motzei shnei klali masom chinsel zeh hata prat benehem v'donam b'chalu prat. Yes, we're allowed to do this. If you have two klali that are right next to each other, and there's and then the prat comes right after. You can rearrange it to get your cloud product cloud. Okay. It doesn't have to be a separate, separate puzzle. It doesn't matter. Right. Maybe it's better that it's not a separate puzzle because, therefore, you know, it allows us to a little bit manipulate within the puzzle. Okay. Anyway, so th that's what I would have said. But no, Zevach, Shlamav, Asher Hei tells me expand it to all Korbanot, including even, seems to say this, right, uh, the Shemin, the log of the Shemin that comes with the Mitzorah. So with the log of the Shemin with the Mitzorah, what happens is, you know, the Mitzorah is outside the camp. First you do this ritual with the birds to like get rid of the most severe tumor as it were, and allow them to come into the camp. Then he waits seven days. And then on the eighth day, you do the, spe the special corporate of the Mitzorah. With the special corporate of the Mitzorah to purify him, is an asham, and you use the blood of the asham to put, you know, on his uh, thumb and his earlobe or whatever. And then you take a log shemin, and the log shemin is all, which comes with the asham, and it's almost like a little bit of its own korban because you sprinkle seven times from the oil of the log shemin, you know, towards the kodesh. And then you use the, you do with the, with the oil, the remainder of the oil, like you put from it on the ear of the lobe and on the thumbs, just like you did by, you know, the, the blood of the asham. So how do we think of this log shemin? Do we think of it as something that has a matir, and what's the matir? The matir is the blood of the korban. Or do we think about it as something that's matir itself, uh, that, 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 that it doesn't have a matir, it just comes by itself, okay? Because and part of that argument would be, like, the, a, like in a sachim, that you could bring it on a different day, and you can bring it on a different day. So let's take a look. So the Gemara says, How many Rebbe Meir, the Tanya, this is Rebbe Meir, because we've done it by itself. Log Shem and Shabbat Zara, Chayav and Alav Mishim people, the Rebbe Meir, that Rebbe Meir says, you're high for people, okay? Aim a safer, but wait, at the end it says, 
Umoti ani minchas nesachim v'adam. That minchas nesachim is not included. Okay, because presumably that is a matir et atzma. So the Gemara says, um, that is, um, where were we? Um, Asal Rabbana. That goes like the rabbis, Titania. So it seems like the Nesachim and the Log Shemen are the same. They're these types of liquids or whatever they are, the same separate from the Korban. That certainly when they come with the Korban, you can conceive of it as though the blood of the Korban is the Matya for them. And that's what Rabbi Meir says by both of these. He says this by the Log Shemen and he says it by the Nesachim. But the rabbis say, maybe... <clears throat> Excuse me, the rabbis say, since we know these can come separate and then they're matya themselves, even when they come together with the korban, they're seen as being matya themselves and they're excluded from people. Um, love, they said back to him, I'll prove to you the blood of the korban. Is it matya them? They're matya themselves. Because in theory, you could bring them after the korban. Right. So when you do bring it separate, I agree with you. When you bring it with the korban, then I think the blood is matya, and they say no, it's only one mechanism. They're matya themselves. So the chachamim say the log shemen, presumably, and the nesachim are excluded from people. The Mimir says when they come with the korban, they're included with people. So now we got a bright problem. This bright seems to say that the log is included in people, and the nesachim are excluded. So at least presumably they they go together. How do you explain that? So let's see what the gemara says. Amar Rebbe Yosef. So this is a position of Rebbe, which we'll introduce in a minute. And Rebbe says the following. Actually, the Lo Kshemen of Mitzorah could be that even the Chachamim agree that this is matir, that this is not matir itself, that this has a matir. Why? Because what do you do with the Lo Kshemen of the Mitzorah? The Lo Kshemen of the Mitzorah, you take it. Let's say you brought it after the Korban. The Chachamim proof that this is matir tatzmo, it doesn't have two components, is that you can bring it separate from the korban. Okay, so if you bring the sachim separate from the korban, what do you do with them? You just put them all in the mizbeach. So there's no matir, you just put it all in the mizbeach. But with the log shemen, what do you do? So first, so you first sprinkle it, then you use it for the ears, and then the kohanim eat it. So you can say, wait a minute, there is a matir here. Not blood, not something that's on the altar, but oil. Is the matyam because it's going like in the direction, you know, of the altar and of the of the mikdash. So that's uh, an expansion of the idea of matyam because until now, you know, matyam required something physically put on the altar, whether it was blood or whether it was the lavona or whatever. But nevertheless, you could view this as saying generally, I think, the sachim because they can come separate, are matyam tatzman even when they're with the korban. But shemen even when it comes separate is not one whole. Is not it does have two components. Has a matyam and has the remainder of the shemen. So therefore. So it's true that the Chachamim say they're all the same, but he were going to claim Rebbe would actually say that you can pass him in a Sachim, is not, is, does not have two components, and is all, and is excluded from people. Shemin does have two components as an included in people. So basically okay. what we're saying is, when we had um, on the list above, that even mm -hmm. Log Shemin um, is included, so it's either the position of Rebbe or the position of a man. It's not the position of Rebbe Meir, because at the end of the bright it says that the Nesachim are excluded. I mean, it's just a Chachami Meir? No, that's a good Mars point. It can't be anybody. It can't be Rebbe Meir. Rebbe Meir said that both Lok Shemen and Minchas Nesachim have people. It can't be the Chachamim, because the Chachamim say both Lok Shemen and Minchas Nesachim don't have people, and the Bryce has split its vote. So the only way we can split the vote is not to choose between Rebbe and the Chachami, but to choose a third opinion of, of between Rebbe Meir and the Chachami, but to choose a third opinion of Rebbe. Mm -hmm. So Rebbe basically is like the Chachamim, that Nesachim don't have people, but he says, but, but Log Shemin, that's a different story. Okay, so, Rebbe, the Amr Log Shemin 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 since the, uh, sort of the sprinkling permits it, Matno Shemin 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 you can actually do Pekel during the act of sprinkling. Okay, the time you're talking about, Log Shemin 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 that there's an Ela that's sanctified until the blood is put on the, on, you know, on the altar. Nizrak of the blood of the Asha. Nizrak Adam lo nenim lo morlin. Once the blood is on the altar, they're not allowed the chatzibah to get benefit, but there's no meila. Okay, so that is mm, the chachamin position, that when it comes with the korban, the only thing that's it is the blood. Rebbe Omer, one would wonder what you would say about that when it comes by itself, but we're not dealing with that right now. Rebbe Omer, mongin ad yitin matnosav. That no, there is meila even on this, even when there were came with a korban, until the sprinkling occurred of the oil itself. So since the sprinkling of the oil is a matir 
of the status of Mi'iwa, meaning in the end, what can be done with the oil, by the way, once after it's placed on the Mitzora, the remainder of the oil can be eaten by Kohenim. So it's just like anything else that's sanctified. You do something, it's not permitted to be eaten. So Rebbe says, ah, but here it's not just the blood that permits it to be eaten. It is forbid if there's still Mi'ila until the sprinkling of the oil. So part of the sprinkling of the oil itself permits the rest to be eaten. So now we can say within the oil itself, there is a matya. The oil is the matya for itself. Okay? The shavin, but they agree. Okay? Even the chachamim who say that there's no mi'ila agree that you're not allowed to eat it until actually you finish all of the applications. You know, that's at least like the And even Rebbe presumably says that you're not allowed to eat it until you not only do the sprinkling, but you also put it on the mitzora and, and you change the status of the mitzora. Okay, but anyway, so that's a nice answer. The answer is that even according to the general approach, like the Chachamim, that there's no Megila by Nesachim, because since they come by themselves, they're, they're not two components, you could still argue that Shemin is two components, and therefore by Shemin, it is included in Megila. Okay, so it seems to be a nice answer, but let's take a look. Conceptually, it's a nice answer. It's interesting, though, it's all one liquid. Right. So you can't really separate Yeah, but the think form. about it like the mincha. The mincha, you take the hand breath, right. and you do that, and the rest of the mincha, so that's the mind. Right, but that's separating. I, I, no, because you're too. You separate it, you yeah. put your finger in, and you yeah. do that. Right. It's like you take the comets and you do that, right, and the rest, right, right. that's the matya, that's what's right, permitted. Right, right, right. So you do this, right. that's the matya, that's what's permitted. Right, right. Okay? So, Amrua Kamei de Rebbe Yirmiya. So, they say, they, the students said this answer of who's Rebbe Yosef's answer in front of you. So Amr's Rebbe Yirmiya said, Gavar Rabbah to Rebbe Yosef, Lema Ki Amelsa, such a great personage like Rebbe Yosef would give such an answer. It seems sounds like a very good answer. But let's take a look why the Gemara doesn't like it. Haray Log, Abad Mifnei Atzmo, the Luchuli Amamah, no, from Sharulay, the Loma Taglimay, one minute, he said. We could have a debate between Rebbe and, the debate of Rebbe and the Chachamim, I mentioned this parenthetically before, about when does the oil become permissible to be consumed, was when you were bringing it with the korban. The chamim say that the blood removes the me'ila status, and Rebbe says, no, the blood plus the oil removes the me'ila status. But what happens when you bring the oil by itself? Presumably, everybody would agree there that it's the oil, that the oil removes the me'ila status. There is no blood there in that case. Right? I mean, you remove it by itself after. You brought the asha today, and you bring the, the oil three days later. So in that case, what's going to allow the oil to be consumed? You can't say the blood of the asham. You didn't even designate the oil after the asham was brought. So in that case, everybody is going to agree that the oil, the sprinkling of the oil is mocked here, the remainder to be eaten, and they will still say that there is no people. Okay, let's take a look. All right, look about, if they ask, and even though that's true, that it makes it permissible to be eaten, there still would not be people, okay? The time we talk about the low shem shem so Rabbi Meir says when it comes with the korban, there's people because you have the blood of the korban, like Rabbi Meir said by the Nesachim. But you can bring your asham today and your lobe, you know, a week later. So therefore, clearly, it's not the blood that's mocked or the lobe. And he says, as we now know, fine. In that case, I agree there's no people. But um, when it comes with the korban, then there is people because the blood is mocked here. Okay, but now what do we see? The Rebbe Mayor says that when the low comes after the korban, comes by itself, there's no pico. But everybody agrees in that case that the oil, the sprinkling of the oil, is mocked here, the remainder to be eaten. So it's so just because the sprinkling of the oil is mocked here, the remainder to be eaten, nobody says that that makes it that people applies here. Presumably because... This is something that, why not actually, by the way, it makes a lot of sense. How is this any different than a mincha or than a korban and so on? Well, the difference is two parts. Number one is, is this really a korban? It's number one type of an interesting question. Do you identify the whole thing as a korban? It's something that you need to use to ritual, blah, 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 blah but is it a korban? And number two is, and maybe they're interrelated, do you put any of this thing on the mizbeach, since you don't put any of this thing directly on the mizbeach? So therefore, the Quran says that's not a good answer. You can't say the reason the bright has said that there was pigu, by Shemin is because Shemin has a mat here, the sprinkling. Because actually we know that even Rebbe may agrees that there's no pigo by Shemin when it comes by itself. So there's just no pigo. So therefore, 
that is so clearly it is not because of the sprinkling that is not sufficient to say that 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 applies the only reason there would be pigle by the shemen is if you link it to the korban and you speak about the dam as a mafia but then we've got a problem because the mission said there's pigle by the shemen which means when it comes with the korban because of the blood the mission right excuse me and it says that there's no pigle by the minchas mesachim well so why not how are you splitting your vote so the Gemara says um, okay, Ella Amr Birmi Allah Ola Rebi Mayor he some yimi kind of soft him. So one answer is just get out your eraser. Fine, it's Rebi Mayor. There's people because of the blood of the Korban and it's come coming with the Korban, and take out that line of Nisachim in the list of things that there's no people. Um so Amar Baye Ola Mutis. No, no, don't erase that. Okay, the tunnel loga baima asham, who didn't nisachim by my mazeva. If you buy Rabbi is gonna say actually you're right. It's not low chum so much Torah. The difference is not no no. The difference is not log yes people nusachim no people. The difference is for Rebbe Mayer with korban yes people without korban no people. So when it said there's people by the log, it did not mean the log and not the nusachim. It meant the log and also the nusachim, anything that comes with a korban. And when it says there's no people by the nusachim, it didn't mean the Nesachim as opposed to the Log. It meant there's no people whether Nesachim or Log when it comes without, not together with the Korban. So it's a little difficult read. Why should we assume one of them means with and one means without? But okay, that's what he says. Uh, it's not splitting the vote between Log and Nesachim. It's splitting the vote, and this isn't the splitting, it's Rabbi Meir's position of coming with the Korban and not coming with the Korban. When these things come with the Korban, the blood is matter and there's people. And then when the Sachim comes by themselves, who are in the Loga Babishnat, when the Log comes by itself, then there is no Matir, there's no two, no two components, and then Rebbe Meir concedes that there is no people. Okay. Chatas Ofta Mamatas Pesar Lakohani. Okay, continuing here. It's not a, <clears throat> clear if now we're continuing in the bright or continuing in our mission. But anyway, Chatas Of, so that's included, because even though it's a bird, Gavamatia. So now that the, the fact that that fits into people is pretty obvious. Once we say an Olas O fits into people and so on. But what we're actually going to use this as an opportunity to do is to say, how do we know the Quran get to eat the meat of the Khatas Oaf? Because actually, there's a couple of things that it's not explicit who gets to eat them. So we're now going to use this as an opportunity to list things that the Kohanim are entitled to eat. Because it's not explicit elsewhere that they get are entitled to eat, and we're going to explain where we learned that from. Okay. How does of them about this bizarre card? You know what I How do you know the card get to eat it? The tiny lady, lady talked about the cold corona. Now, this is at the end of Parsha's Korach, where, um, you know, Korach challenged the Kahuna, and um, and therefore at the end of Parsha's Korach, it lists, all, it reinforces and lists all the things that the body are entitled to. Rashi throws in just for, you know, just, just, just stand, Rashi says, oh yeah, there's like a muscle that we have, which is like, oh, it's good, you know, it's a good thing the leg of my cow broke. Like, you know, I guess, you know, it made me realize that, I don't know, I needed, it's a good thing my car broke down and made me realize I needed to do all overall, and otherwise I might have gotten into a big accident or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, it's a good thing, Korach challenged the Kuna. Now I'm going to gonna reinforce to you everything you as the Kuna are entitled to. So that's the end of Korach's Korach. So he says, so here's the puzzle. It says, um, so it lists like everything, even things that we knew from before you're entitled to, but there's some things that use the word kol. It says like this. This is Yurchet. Uh, uh, nine, ten, nine, ten, 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 right? Um, and a lot of our judges are going to be on the words kol. I mean, this is just begging for a midrash halacha, you know? Um, and then the end of it. Asher yashivu li kodesh kodeshim l'chavu v'nechas. Asher yashivu li, and then it's kodesh kodeshim l'cha. So that means that the Kohanim are entitled to eat it, right? 
right or whatever. Okay. So now we're just going to go through this whole part. This whole part. Okay. Cut this out. Not immediately. The tiny lady. Lady taught. Kol korbanam. Rabbo slok shem and shem and So kol korbanam includes <clears throat> even the lok shem and shem That gets to our question of is that really a korban? You know, it's sanctified. It's brought in. It's used in a ritual. But it's not like it's offered, and it's not like it goes on the mizbeach. So sagadai tamina mina eish kasi kodesh kasi mina eish. So something that doesn't go on the mizbeach, or you know, um, so or you know that none of it goes on the mizbeach, maybe it would not apply. Kazarach mana b'haylav mosar mina eishud not mutar mosar left over. Kamash melan uchol kavanan anything that is brought close, anything that is mikrav. Okay, um, so. Um, and Rashi points out that it says by the log, the kriv oso la'asham, that's lo kasham then. So the word korban is la'akriv, to bring close, so it actually uses the word the kriv by the oil. Okay, l'chom min chasam, we're going to get to the chatasof, that's where we started, we're getting there. L'chom min chasam, l'rabos min chas omer min chas akna'ot, that's last week's parasha. Okay, the mincha of the omer and the mincha uh, by the uh, by the sota. That you know, the thing that uh, that the eating is like the whole idea of a korban is that it achieves kapara. Minchas Omer, lahatir asya. Minchas Omer is brought not to achieve anybody's kapara, you know, not to atone or change anybody's halach status, but it's come to uh, allow you to uh, to eat the new grain. Minchas Knas the Vara Avon Kasi. Minchas Avon also is coming to clarify whether she sinned or not. Kamash Mulam l'chol minchasa. Okay. So, Kol Korbanan is Kol here is a uh, Log Shemin. And Rashi says, going to just like it's the Ukrib. Okay, Kol Mikasam is Omer and Shota. Um, I guess I say Kna'od. Okay, next, Kol Okay, can you guess what we're going to what we started with. Now, why would I think not? But by the way, it's interesting. The Torah never says that the Kwanimita Khatasov. So that's actually, you know, anyway, Sankadaitramina Niveli, because you break it through the back of the neck. So maybe since it's not shekhti properly, maybe nobody gets to eat it. You know, maybe you burn it outside or something. Nope. Well the Torah doesn't do that either. Right. Okay. I understand. But anyway, now we know what to do. Ulukhola Shamam. The Rabos Asham Nazir Vashem Mitzora. The Asham brought by a Nazir when he became Tamei to start his Naziris again. And the Asham brought by Mitzora that we've been referring to. Salgadai to purify himself. Those things are coming to start new, like, you know, to uh, not for Kapara, but for like, now it's interesting. Well, but a Nazir, he, he became Tamei, so he doesn't say. It's... Yeah, but this is not to be the tire. This is to start the Nazir's tire and you do the Para, do it, whatever. Okay, but it's coming to like, you know, to change his halachic status, you know, to re reinstate his Nazir's or to purify him from being a Mitzorah. Kamash Milan, so it just teaches you. And by the way, there are other Chata'ot that are coming to change your status, like a Chata's of Yoledes, right. that is not Mechaber. But the assumption is that we already know. You don't need a reboy. Okay, here, you know, is stuff that we otherwise wouldn't have known, so maybe I would have thought, since it never says explicitly what to do here, and these aren't the same, a classic Korban, maybe they don't get to eat the meat. So it tells you they do get to eat the meat. So the Gemara says, one minute, Asher Mitzorah Behed Yixiv Bey. It says explicitly by the Asher Mitzorah that the Quran didn't eat it. Ella the rabbis asham nazir ki asham mitzora. Fine. That to tell you an asham nazir is just like an asham mitzora. Now you understand, by the way, because asham nazir, asham mitzora is a little more classic. You do have chatas, which is about changing somebody's tumantara status. But asham nazir is not about tumantara. It becomes tahor by the ashes of the paraduma. The asham nazir is to actually allow the nazirs to begin again. So anyway, it's a little different. And it never says explicitly that the Kohanim eat it. So this is telling you that the Kohanim get to eat it. Okay? Now the left is a shared Now that's not a call. So this all is telling you something you otherwise did not know. This is going to tell us something that we did know. We're still going to identify because as Rashi says, a lot of the things in the list there in Korach are things that we already knew, and the Torah is just reinforcing it. Okay. So the next line is not going to tell us something we didn't already know, but we're just going to explain what it's included. Okay. A shared yeshivuli zegez al hager. So if somebody steals and then takes an oath and lies, 
they bring a asham, asham gzelos, and they return the principal plus a fifth, which is actually a fourth, um, to, to the owners. But the Torah says, if there's nobody to return it to, it goes to the Kohanim, the principal plus the, the fine. So who has somebody that doesn't have a relative to inherit them? Only a gear, okay? Who then doesn't have children after they convert. Okay, so that's, that's a gezel gear. L'chahu, shachai yehei afilu kadosh bosa yisha. This money that's given back, okay, so this is the one here. And you fully own that money, and it's not considered like somehow sanctified money. You fully own it, and you could go ahead and marry a woman with it. That's usually an example of whether it's considered totally yours. Okay, so for example, this is only going on this, uh, even to use like for Kedushin, it's only going on the Gezel HaGer. You go ahead and you try to marry a woman with the meat of a chatas, which is actually a mission kedushin, and it doesn't take effect. Even though you have a right to eat the meat of a chatas, you don't own it. The phrase that the Gemara uses is, Mishulchan Gavor Kazachu. When you're eating the meat of a chatas, you're sitting at God's table. Like when I come to, to Hanan's house there, he invites me for Shabbos, and I say, Oh, you know what? I really don't have time to stay, but I'm just going to take all the food and walk out. <laughs> no, like, you know, he's not giving me the food. I mean, I might ask him, may I take some more with me? But he's allowing me to eat from his food. So when the Kohanim eat from this stuff, they're eating from God's food, okay? They're not, not theirs. And if they were to use that meat to buy something with, to marry a woman, it would not take effect. That's called Mishlochem Kavalas Kavach. But when you get the money that was being returned, okay, that's money. That's not a korban. And therefore, that you can use to, you know, for your own purposes. Okay. Hi, we're talking about Yeah. The, the end of the pasuk, Kodesh Kodeshim Tochu, calls Achar, Nochal, Oto. Um, I think that's the next pasuk, right? That's the next pasuk. Yeah. Is that broadening it? Or something? Yeah, well, no. Uh, not broadening it, but the Kodesh Kodeshim Tochu is going back on all of this as opposed to the, it's sort of like, this is like, okay. Gezel like gear you get to use for anything you want, and then the next pasuk is you know, but that all the things that are really the sacrifices that has to be eaten in the temple. Okay. Kozachar. Oh well, the kozachar is even balimum. Um, that's what kozachar. Oh, I see. But still refers to kohanim. But still male kohanim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Male kohanim. But even balimum. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Tanya, we turn to Brisa. Rabbi Eliezer, maybe Rabbi Yosi, or Rabbi Yosi, some have a Yusa. Now, this is going to be what's back to people. This is going to be similar to the discussion of what do you call it? Of, um, of excluding the Parmani Srafim, but this isn't going to be about the Parmani Srafim categorically excluded. It's going to be certain acts of the Parmani Srafim. And as opposed to saying, since the Parmani Srafim, the blood is not on the Mizbeach, outer Mizbeach. It's, it's, there's no people. That's Rabbi Shimon's position. This position of Rabbi Eliezer is going to say the only aspect of people that applies to Prime Minister Ruffin is an avoda, when you're doing an avoda on the outer Mizbeach, and it's about something that is going to be eaten out in the temple courtyard, not in the Heicha. Okay? So, what is it that is done by the Prime Minister Ruffin? Okay, again, right? There you go. I'm sorry, wait, what was, what's your statement? Because Rav Shimon said that... Rav Shimon says they're completely is. excluded, okay? Right. This is not going to say they're completely excluded. They're all, they're, what is excluded is, in order, a primary is and there is an element that people applies to, but only when you do an avoda, it's going to... It's really the blood is done outside, right? Yeah. So it's going to refer to, by the way, chutz often means outside of the, outside of the mikdash. Here chutz is going to mean in the azara. Okay, so this chutz, this is pinim. Okay, so only something that an avoda is done out here, and it only applies to something which will, you know, which will be eaten or consumed by the Mizbeach out here. So what's the one avoda that is done out here? For, to Michael said, what? Spilling the rest of the book. Spilling the Vishurayim, okay? So, and what is the one thing that is eaten or consumed out here? The Yom okay? So, let's take a look. That's what he says. Um, okay. Rabbi Pigel Pigel. No Pigel. If it's all about stuff out, you know, in the Azara, it's Pigel. If it's stuff that's only in the Heichal, it's not. Keitzah. Hayaomei B'chutz. 
Ba'amar, Hareni Shochei, Lahazot Midamog Machar, I'm shechting this Parman Israfim, and I'm going to sprinkle the blood on the inner altar tomorrow, tomorrow, Lopi Gel. Shemachshava Bechut, the act, the avoda you were doing was on the outside in the Azara, the Dover Nasa Bifnin, but it was about doing it about something that the avoda was going to be done on the inside. Lopi Gel. Now, let's say you were doing the avod on the inside. You're saying, I'm sprinkling this blood on the inner altar, and then and with the intent to spill the blood and to burn the emurim tomorrow. So in that case, even though the part two is on the outside, the avod you're doing is on the inside. Low people, that's also not people. You're thinking about it when you're doing an avod on the inside. About something done on the outside. You have to be thinking about it when you're on the outside regarding an avod on the outside. So, aval, haya omen b'chutz v'amar. Hareni shochei lishboch shirayim l'machar. Ah, it's not shirayim actually, because that part, the shirayim, by the way, Michael. Whether shirayim should count for this has to do whether shirayim are ma'ake for chathos of p'nikos. If shirayim are not ma'ake, then they're not an avoda for which people thought matters. But you know which one act that is done out here? That is, it's the shrita, okay? So, now actually, it's interesting, because it actually it could have also included other things, right? Kabbalah, Olacha, okay, actually it's three of the Avodas, I mean, that's an interesting question, whether the Halacha here or the Halacha here, that actually has to be a discussion. Okay, but at, like, at least two out of the four Avodas are done out here. Right, let's not forget. Didn't we have that by Eagle says, according to the, you know, you don't, it was not applied at all, remember, like, you know, even if you yeah, stand so the, yeah, yeah, that's relevant, that's what's going there. Anyway, two out of the four Avodas apply out here. So if you do it during these avodas atam, guarding a second part of the process that normally goes on the mizbeach, the the burning of the murmur of this, then you have actually yashikayach accomplished people. Okay, so, so you've done that outside and you right you know, the other part right of the, because this is not Rabbi Shimon who categorically excludes it. It's just that you need both components to be on the outside. Okay. Um, okay. My crop. Where do you get this from? Where does he get like limiting it this way? Because it's all a question about what's the scope of it has to be like shlamim. Everybody agrees like shlamim, it has to have two components, a mat and a remainder. Rabbi Shimon says it has to be like shlamim, it has to be the blood is on the outer altar. Rabbi Eliezer is saying here it has to be like shlamim. That you need the avoda and the thing that the avoda is being done. And the thought is about to be stuff on the outside. So where does he get it? Kashir Yurami Shur Zeva Hashlamim. This is what it says by the part of the coin Mashiach. It says, do to the entrails like you did to the entrails of a shlamin. That's but now that's part coin Mashiach is one of these parimani srafim, one of these things that the blood is on the inside and it's burnt. So why is a pasuk by parimani srafim connecting it to a shlamin? Okay, and it's not really to tell you a halach about the Imurim, because if you read the Psukim, all of the Imurim are listed. And after it lists all the Imurim, it says, oh, just like you do by a Shlomim. So what the heck is the point to connect one of these Parmani Shrafim to a Shlomim? What do, we, what do we have left to learn from a Shlomim? We know about all of the Imurim, it says it right here. Um, the same in Shlavim. Now, of course, now it's completely arbitrary, not whatever, but completely the discretion of the Darshan to decide which features of a Shlavim to emphasize. Okay, but for Rabbi Eliezer, he's emphasizing these features. Okay, so the same way as Shlavim, both the act, the, the avoda, and the thing that the, the thought about what you're planning to do tomorrow relates to things that are on the outside. And only then is it like the Shlomim that laws of Pigum apply to it. We will like Rabbi Eliezer, that Parmani Shrafim, that, that Pigum does apply to Parmani Shrafim, not like Rabbi Shimin, but only when both the avoda that you're doing it to, during and the plan of what you're going to do later relates to things on the outside. So Amar Rav, so Rav said, the halacha. This is a halacha that's never going to apply to Yimos Mashiach. So what, what do you mean? Oh, this is the halacha. So I'm well, going mean, to this the entire time. I'm going to So let's forget learning about. Let's forget learning learning zvachim. By the way, it will be shorter. It's interesting that they call it shchit discussion because chulin is actually the technical term for meseches chulin is shchit 
and the technical term for Mesechas is Vachim, although the Mishnah, although the Begins is called as Vachim, okay? But apparently you see here that it's also called Shechitas Kachim. Okay, so let's not learn all those Vachim. Okay, lo lis the Yochzov and Shechitas. Ella, Trosh Yochabal Sacha. Okay, it's part of Talmud Torah. We want to learn what is it that these mitzvahs that God has given us. It's not about practical application. So, hachanami drosh yakabah sacha. So, what bothering you? So, amar lahachi coming in. This is what bothers me. Hilchas alamli. I understand discussing the theoretical pasuk issues, but how? But what does it mean to pasuk in bottom line? Pasuk in bottom line suggests that there's some relevance. Okay. The only reason that there's relevance is if you're pasuk, so I'm going to know. Well, there's a base on it. Now, maybe, yeah, this maybe like the Hebrew Hinami. I want to know in this space of it, what the love is going to be. You know, but apparently that's like, you know what, we'll worry about it then. Maybe we'll have different things to consider then. How are you going to lock it up sock now? You know, you, you'd actually say, like, what does it mean to Paskin in the absence of a relevant context? Anyway, so that's what bothers me. Mr. Kharina Amrle, Halacha Kamina, it's not clear how these two answers are different. What bothers me is why are we talking Halacha as opposed to talking the theoretical position? Now, Tosu says, by the way, he goes to a number of places that the Torah Paskins halacha, which seem to be completely theoretical. Like we answer Right. Do they ask that same problem? Well, there? no, but the question is do they use the language of halacha? Again, he said, we don't have a problem discussing the positions. Are we going to use halacha? But Tosus gives a list of cases where the Gemara seems to pass in halacha by something that's only relevant in a time of base of Nikdash. Most of them read it. Most of them he's able to explain that we're really only paskining it because it does have a practical relevance nowadays. There's a handful that he can't explain that way. And then he just tries to say, well, maybe what bothers him in particular here is that this situation only comes if you've transgressed. If you had a people thought you're not supposed to have. So if you just wanted to tell me a halacha in general, how do we pass the Beit Tel Do you do four? With Ismaki, one of the matanos or two of the matanos? You know, fine, you'll tell me what the halacha is. But to tell me a halacha that's relevance is if somebody does something wrong, like that's like. Sorry, but all that is, you mean all people, right? Yeah, like, they, like any halacha about people is a halacha that, we're, that we sort of say, like, you know what? It's like A, it assumes somebody's doing something wrong, and B, it's not relevant nowadays, let's not talk about it. So that's what Ray Tosis explains, because there are times that Gemara says halacha by something that relates to the base of Mikdash, and it's not bothered by this question. But yeah, when you said pasta, you mean? Using the word Hilchasa, yeah. Hilchasa. Hilchasa. So if you just don't use that word, then you're not possible. Well, I don't know if that's the two Mishonos here, Hilchasa Lamali or Halacha Kamina. I mean, if it's at Halacha Kareb Yosi, I don't know. I, you know, I, to me, it's not clear what the difference of those two final answers are. Rashi, it's hard for me to see if Rashi is saying that there is a difference. So, but maybe you're right. Maybe somehow the word Hilchasa has a particular force. You know, that's just saying halacha kid doesn't, but Tosis doesn't seem to read it that way. Tosis is bothered just in other cases where the Gemara Paskins, the halacha is like X, even if it's a, just a, you know, a future or a base on Nikdash oriented. But if they're having a discussion and they sort of like seem to come down on one side, but they don't use that exactly. word. Exactly. That that, then bother. it's not Paskin. So what I'm getting from this is that Pico is actually pretty difficult to accomplish. Was well, something that doesn't apply to it all. You know, it's, uh, it's just like something that's. Right. Uh, well, you know, it it's all encapsulated so much or something else. You have to be you a know, talk, talk or lucky in order to. <laughs> no, I, you know, and, uh, right. And, and also, I mean, because we're really supposed to do, you know, and we have to get everything else right, you know, you, even in those cases, it does apply. And if you started out with people, you're really supposed to have stopped, you know, not done everything else. Right. So. Really David, does that say uh, give any difference between those two final answers? Or, uh, you know, you're still recording. Am I? I think, right? It is. Oh. Yeah.